Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Kim Brown in Baltimore. The House of Representatives passed a provision on Tuesday that would alter the financial calculations of transferring federal land, making it easier to transfer control of public land to state and local regulators. Now, environmental groups and some Democrats are criticizing the move, saying that it could put much of the 640 million acres of federal public lands at risk of sale to developers with little benefit to the public. And with us to discuss this is Alan Rousam from joining us today from Washington, D.C. He is the Senior Director of Government Relations for lands at the Wilderness Society, which is a nonprofit land conservation organization that is dedicated to protecting natural areas and federal public lands in the U.S. Alan, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Kim. Glad to be here. Well, Alan, if you could first explain exactly what this new provision is and how it will make it easier to transfer federal public lands and give states control of these lands. Yeah, I mean, it's a, um, in some ways, this is a, an obscure budget rulemaking decision that the House has made, but it's really a sneaky, underhanded one in the sense that it was decided upon uh, very late yesterday and voted on quickly. Um, uh, at the heart of it uh, is the reality that in previous Congresses, the Congressional Budget Office, which is used to decide whether legislation is going to cost the federal government money, um, in previous Congresses, the Congressional Budget Office was allowed and and um, made the case that when you sell federal land, the American public and the federal treasury are losing an asset. And when they lose an asset, that is a cost to the federal budget and should be offset when um, a decision is made to sell those lands. Um, what the House did yesterday through um, budgetary rulemaking is say that that is no longer going to be the case. And when a member of Congress offers a piece of legislation to sell or transfer federal land, they will no longer have to face a budget point of order um, when another member of Congress can say, um, this bill would actually create a cost to the federal budget, so you need an offset to to pass this bill because it it um, it actually is creating a, a net loss to the American public. And so now, what this essentially does is open up a world where um, a member of Congress can pass a bill that sells federal land, and um, the new rules say that that piece of land had no value to the public. You don't need an offset for it. And so procedurally, that paves the way for significant more legislation to be passed that would transfer or sell federal land that belongs to all of us. So tell us why this is of concern to you and other conservationist groups. And also, can you talk about what is at risk for the public and elaborate kind of what you just said? For example, um, endangered species of plants and animals that are on public lands. What are the other uh, possible side effects, as it were, to the passage uh, of this provision? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think Americans nationwide really value their parks, their forests, their national wildlife refuges, and their public lands. And um, But there is also a more sinister effort in play by some members of Congress who would like to sell or transfer those lands so that industry or other um, or other interest groups can get a hold of them for uh, drilling, logging, um, or other sort of extractive uses, and um, that is a that's a problem that that is a major issue because Americans want want more public land. They want more places to recreate in. They want more places to be outdoors in, and at the same time, certain members of Congress would would prefer to have those lands locked up and taken away from the public so that they can be um, they can be put to use by industry to extract those resources. Um, we think that's the wrong choice for our public lands. Uh, the American public for the most part agrees and I think um, what this what this budget uh, what this budget gimmick essentially allows them to do is move with much more impunity to sell or transfer public lands they think are not in the interest of the American public to be able to recreate in or, or be outside in and, and instead uh, make a different decision about how those lands should be used. And um, to us, that's a, uh, that is the wrong priority. And I think it could be utilized in any state around the country now, whether you're in the East or the West, um, when you have a piece of, of public land that a certain member of Congress thinks would be better run by the state or better managed by a special interest or a, or a private entity, they can now attempt to move legislation without having to offset the cost of that to the American public. 
The Washington Post and the Hill.com have reported that a large number of Republicans, including the chairman of the House Committee on Natural Resources, Utah Congressman Rob Bishop, say that states can be more responsive to local community needs and also these lands can help generate state and local income tax. So how would you respond to that? Yeah, I think that's an argument that's frequently made by those that think that the federal government can't manage the land that it owns. But I think that's also a, um, a self-fulfilling prophecy because Congress has systematically underfunded the management of those lands for many years, making it much more difficult for the federal government to, in fact, um, take on its mandate to manage those places. The reason the federal government manages parks and public lands is they're managing them for the interest of all Americans, since we all own a piece of these lands. If you were to sell or transfer them to states or private interests, you take away that right of all Americans to be able to have a say in the management of those lands, and you start to have special interests and people who have um, particular needs or, inter or, or wants on those lands can make those decisions without um, anyone to stop them. And I think that, uh, you know, with 640 million acres of public lands in this country, it's actually a relatively small amount of the total land mass. Um, and it is a unique value that Americans put on protecting special places, protecting our natural heritage that um, has come to define us as a nation. And I think uh, making a move that would um, allow... Uh, a drilling company or a logging industry um, to have its say over the use of these lands is not likely to get to be in the interest of all Americans who want to be able to have them and recreate on them. Um, I will also say that I think state budgets uh, in many instances are not um, are not strong in in many states where a state could actually manage these lands. It, it costs a lot more than people think it does to upkeep and maintain places that the American public can recreate in. It could quickly be a reality and in fact likely would be a reality that if a state had a budget issue and was managing more of these lands, it would need to sell those lands and divest themselves of them in order to make a budget or to make ends meet when other when other budgetary constraints are harming them. And so that also makes it very likely that um, if you were to transfer federal lands to states, that the states wouldn't actually intend to manage those lands as uh, outdoor recreation parks and and wildlife refuges they would instead likely look to divest them to private interests to manage and it's those private interests that are unlikely to um to abide by things like the endangered species act or the national environmental policy act that are ways that the american public continues to be able to have a say in the management of these places and also to make sure that iconic species um, and and that their own private property rights in some instances are are protected so um, it, it's it, it's it's often an argument made that states would manage these lands better um, but I think if you're going to keep every American's interest at heart um, which is the entire reason behind our public land system you want them managed by the federal government and they do a good job of it when they actually have the resources to do so um, and those are resources that unfortunately have not come in recent years. So President-elect Donald Trump has said that he wants to reduce regulations that limit resource development such as for oil and gas, but he's also voiced opposition to transferring land control to states. And Congressman Ryan Zinke, his nominee to be Secretary of the Interior, is also opposed to state control of public lands. So could there be pushback from them to this move by Congress? Yeah, I mean, I think that's going to be very interesting how that shapes up moving forward. Um, Congressman Zinke is going to have nomination hearings in front of the Senate Energy Committee in the coming weeks, and no doubt will be asked about this House move to um, remove a procedural barrier that, you know, would, would pave the way for more for more federal land transfer, I suspect he will be asked, you know, what do you think about that House move? And as Secretary of Interior, you know, how do you plan to steward our nation's public lands to ensure that they're not sold and developed? Um, you know, President-elect Trump has similarly, I think, made um, welcome statements and, and statements we, we, we certainly will plan to hold him to uh, in saying that he wants to be a Teddy Roosevelt Republican that really values our public lands. So this could be an issue that, that is, that is uh, a dividing one um, among 
House Republicans and the president-elect and some of his cabinet members. And I think it remains to be seen how that plays out. But um, regardless, I think there is reason to be very concerned that um, some – some folks will want to have their cake and eat it too and be able to say on the one hand we're going to protect public lands that are important but on another hand we certainly should be transferring more of them to states and private interests for fossil fuel development and um, it's our view that you can't have it both ways these these public lands belong to the american public for their enjoyment and if you want to protect them you need to protect all of them um, if you uh, do not feel that way then um, then we need to be we need to be putting that, those folks accountable for that type of decision making and so it'll be interesting to see over the coming weeks how that plays out but um it definitely could be a, a divisive point that um, will need to be rectified and president obama recently designated two national wilderness monuments can you talk about those and his legacy on conservation on america's wilderness and public lands because many say that he could have gone further with for example a total ban of leases on fracking or drilling for oil and gas on on public lands. How, how would you grade President o Obama's legacy on the issue of land conservation? I think the president's, President Obama's environmental legacy is going to stand the test of time as one of the greatest environmental legacies in our nation's history. And the number of acres he's protected, the um, forward-thinking work that he's done internationally and domestically on climate change um, are, are a part of that, but certainly um, prudent, smart regulations that also ensure that our air and water are clean um, play into that legacy as well. And I think um, there is no doubt that what the president has been able to do during his eight years has been um, a titanic effort in, in, in protecting lands and waters around the country and in protecting a future for our children and grandchildren that, that needs to have clean air and water as we grow as a nation. And so um, I think there, there's always more you want to do. There's always more you, you hope you have time to do. Um, but um, with the with the protection of, of lands around the country, I think, you know, over 30 monuments have been designated, many, many rules and regulations promulgated, um, huge marine sanctuaries, marine monuments protected. It, um, it's going to be an incredible legacy that certainly by acreage, uh, you know, e e uh, uh, goes beyond even what what Teddy Roosevelt himself did um, in the early years of environmental protection and is um, and is also beyond President Clinton and 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 others in the 20th century when it comes to land protection. So um, it's going to be one of his greatest legacies. And I think uh, no matter no matter what anybody tries to do about it, it's going to remain that way. We've been speaking with Alan Rousam. He is the Senior Director of Government Relations for the Lands at the Wilderness Society, a nonprofit land conservation organization. And he's been joining us today from Washington, D.C. Alan, it's a pleasure speaking with you. It was a pleasure speaking with you as well. Really appreciate uh, being able to talk about these important issues. And thanks for watching The Real News Network.